everyone, as promised, today we are going to talk about lasers. When doing fabrication, we do two things with lasers, cutting and engraving. Well, actually, they are useful as guidelines and levels also, but we'll get into that another time when I hand some shelves. For the most part, we take a flat piece of material, usually wood, plastic or leather, and either burn just the surface to engrave it or all the way through to cut it. Laser cutting and 3D printing do different things well, but laser cutting tends to be several times faster. It's also much easier to build a small business around laser cutting and engraving. Lee Moffrey studied either through around a laser cutter in her New York apartment. Chinese 40 to 100 watt laser cutters are relatively inexpensive on eBay, but quality control is hit and miss. They're not at all user friendly, and I found the learning her pretty steep. Not as hard as CNC, but more difficult than 3D printing. Even with great software like Lightburn, traditional laser cutters are less suited to prototyping and more for small scale production. Setting up a job once and then making dozens of something. I love my Jinka 80 watt laser. The price and quality are excellent, but doing one of something is a bit troublesome and I often find I just 3D print it instead. Even if the print time is much longer, that's just me though, I'm sure lots of people find it very easy. But I have to do a lot of different things in this job, so I prefer it to be as automated and user friendly as possible. And laser cutters so far really aren't. But that all changed a few years ago when a company called Glowforge made a more DIY friendly laser cutter. Now, the folks at Glowforge are great people with an excellent product. But in my opinion, it has one fatal flaw. It cannot be used without an internet connection. All of the laser cutter's func functions are controlled from the cloud. And as you all know, I'm not a fan of tools in the cloud. You lose internet access, they go out of business. You don't have the tool you paid for. This is not a hypothetical. This happens a few times a year in the IoT world. That's just not acceptable to me. Well, today I have a new laser cutter to review. This is the laser box, an excellent laser cutter like the Glowforge, but it requires no internet connection at all. Not to use, not to set up. If you want to download templates to use from their website, you can, but you don't have to. You can make your own designs locally with CAD or drawing software. The laser box is made by Maybrock, a local Shenzhen company known for its STEM educational products. Everything I've seen from them have been very high quality, just a bit pricey, but you get what you pay for. You want to pay crap prices? As you all know, we Chinese will happily sell you crap. You want iPhone quality? We can do that also, but it comes with the price tag. As for where laser box fits, it is, in my opinion, one of the best designed and best made products I've ever reviewed on my channel. It's powerful, incredibly well made, and super easy to use. Here, let's take a look. It comes in very nice crates, not the usually broken and sprinter wood so many Chinese tools are packed in. It weighs 45 kilo and it's a very awkward shape, so count on needing at least two henchmen to set it on the table. You connect power, the exhaust hose and filter, and power on. The first time you use it, you need to use the included USB cable to tell it the Wi-Fi network name and password. After that, the software will always automatically find it on the network. It works great! The software is much better than any Chinese software I've ever used. You know how awful a lot of our software is compared to our hardware? But they really got it right. It works on Mac and Windows, but not Linux. Now, when I unpacked it and plugged it in, I was cutting within 5 minutes. I'm serious. There is literally no learning curve on this watch. Now, the laser box can absolutely engrave my logo just like this as a raster image, but it's simply not going to look as nice as a proper vector file. And since I would like to put my logo on lots of things, it's worth doing right. Many thanks to Abdallah on Fiverr for the excellent work. 
He specialized in laser engraving, so while day-to-day -day stuff I can do myself, I wanted this one to be done perfectly. There is a link to his fiber profile in the description box. Oh, and for the record, I never offer exposure to fiber contractors or other freelancers until the job is done and I pay full price. Exposure is never payment. Exposure is just being honest, giving attribution and helping out other hardworking professionals. So this is my logo and I'm going to import the files into laser box. First, I have to resize it. It's too large. And then if I want to rotate it, I go into design. Just to rotate it um, 90 degrees. Okay, and we go back to working and we see but uh, because the cutting board is not one of their materials so I have to manually add new materials and is 15 millimeters thick I'm not going to cut it so I will ignore that Go to engrave, power 50% and speed 80% of passes 2 and then save the settings. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the precision of my logo. Okay, now I'm going to send the files to the machine before I can uh, engrave it. It says estimated time 44 minutes 29 seconds. Okay, and now all I need to do is press the button on the laser box. So it's really nice, the engraving. Um, I think I might get it upside down because uh, usually in China we don't use this kind of cutting board. Okay, now next one. I've got a three millimeter thick base wood and I'm going to place it in here. It's going to recognize the material and I'm just going to import a model. Let me delete my logo and uh, let's go back to their uh, back to files. So these are all the templates they come with the laser box software and I'm going to try to engrave to cut the ruler. So here's the ruler, I'm going to adjust it, I'm going to select it and I don't want to waste a lot of material so I don't want to put it in the center. I'm going to move it, I'm just going to use my mouse to uh, move it. So let's star, hit star in this triangle icon and send.
tools, the thick base wood, hardware, and here is our ruler. Nice and simple. Okay, head to the next project. Mm, ma mahogany. Mahogany, also 3 millimeters thick. Going to place it in the center and let the machine recognize this QR code. Identify this material. Let's go back to the program. Okay, looks about right. Let's print it. Okay, estimated time 31 minutes and 24 seconds. Right now I have I grab an A4 paper and I'm going to draw my names on it. Put in the A4 paper in, alright. Now K I Yeah. Select. Okay, now it becomes so I can take out the paper because I already crop out the part I need. Now I'm going to grab another material. I've got tons of the hardware so I'm gonna use that better than you using the wood because it's a waste of material but with cardboard you can practice and practice all day long. Okay put it in identification the seat is a 3.5 millimeter cardboard so if I place the character and the letter in the center they have engraved mode what does it mean the engraved mode SD HD 3d SD takes the shortest time HD takes longer time 3d takes the longest longest time uh, so I, I just I always use SD because I want it to be fast 10 minutes 18 seconds by SD okay HD HD is 24 minutes 6 seconds and 3d it's 24 minutes 30 seconds okay I'm gonna SD Ten minutes. So here you can see this is what I got, and I didn't draw it from on the computer. I draw it by hand. It's crazy. That's it. You can do that all day. Draw your own designs, download from their site, or download from online repositories. As far as materials, it will recognize its own Maybrock branded materials. But you can also use any standard laser cutting material and do the settings manually. You can make custom profiles for your own materials. But what I would really like is the ability to print matching QR codes so the machine could recognize my material also and automate, automatically choose the appropriate custom profile. I think being able to buy from them is great, but if you are in a classroom or makerspace going through a ton of stock, it just makes more sense to buy your own. 
With custom QR codes, you retain the functionality to just put whatever on the cutting bed and have the machine recognize it, which is important because a lot of people aren't going to recognize the difference between materials and thicknesses and know what settings to use. I suppose you could duplicate and print their labels, but that does limit you to using the same materials they supply. As a laser cutter burns through a material, all that smoke has to be vented outside. Normally, that's just a hose and a fan. Maybrock mostly caters to educational customers, so I really think they have school in mind with their design. It has this box separate from the laser cutter itself. In that box, there is a fan and a large filter to remove any particulates. That means you don't have clouds of smoke billowing out the window and into neighboring classrooms. I have the <laughs> exhaust jerry rigged with PVC pipe for this review. I only turn it up when I set it up for daily use. But here's the outlet with the laser cutting running, nothing but warm air. You can still smell the material a bit, but much, much less than without filter the way my 80 watt laser cutter works. Even if you were in an apartment, I don't think your neighbors would smell anything. It's not silent when it's cutting, but about the same as a vacuum cleaner. I am getting 75 to uh, 80 decibels. Now, stuff I don't like. The first one is unrelated to the product itself. Before I said, this is one of the best products I've ever reviewed. To be clear, I'm not sponsored by them. This isn't a pay reviewed. I got it free, but I already have a larger laser cutter so i'm hardly going to lie for them but there is an incentive for reviewers to do this in order to receive a review unit the maybrock marketing department asked that channel owners sign an incredibly restrictive agreement which in my opinion really asked them to cross some ethical lines i refused to sign the agreement got a laser box anyway my buddy angers over at maker muse also refused to sign the agreement and as I feel this, did not get a review unit. I have a problem with this. My channel exists as a part of an ecosystem. People who have never heard of a lot of this kind of tech often see my thumbnail and come to my channel for, well, other things, but tend to stay for the tech. I show them how it works and show them that if I, do, I can do it, they can do it. My job is not to educate people who already know all about this stuff, but to bring new people in and get them interested. There's always someone shrieking in the comments, something like, wake up Shippo, she's using titties to trick you into maybe learning something. Yeah, got me, darn. I want a bait and switch operation, plain and simple. I'm good at it and I take pride in it. Other STEM channels use explosions or pranks or humor to keep people engaged. I use a bit of fan service by pretty much just being myself. As the song says, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. And the medicine is cutting edge science, engineering, and technology content from the most cyberpunk city in the world. But once I wrote them in, Angus, Joe the 3D printing nerd, and countless others, they go into more detail. Whatever interests I spark in viewers, they need channels to go and learn more from. Those channels, like mine, need to be free from bias. They can't do that under a restrictive contract. It breaks my heart that Maybrock went this route because it's such a fantastic product. It does not need anything like that. All it does is put reviewers on the defensive. The other issue is pricing. I asked Maybrock to put a buy link for the laser box on their site. Every time I review a product without clear pricing or that require viewers email for a code, sales are a tiny fraction of what they are with a clear, honest listed price and link to buy it. I don't buy products that want me to email for a code. Maybe you do, but against my device, that's what Maybrock has asked. So if you are interested, the link is in the description box. You can email them for a code. Even I don't have a fixed number and I don't know if it will change or why. So you will have to ask them. Again, 
this isn't taking anything away from the laser box i absolutely love it as a product i've been using it constantly since i got it i've spoken to their engineers and they're absolutely top-notch and very responsive but as a reviewer looking at kind of iffy practice on the sales and marketing side they aren't really consumer friendly i have to look out for my viewers also now i've given you a general overview of the laser box this isn't like the other products i review because as soon as i started using it i knew it was going to be a regular part of my channel so i'm not trying to include every feature all in one video you'll be seeing more tutorials and more demonstrations of exactly what it can do in upcoming videos my final recommendations if you do crafting and DIY and your time is valuable and you don't want to spend it learning a complex new tool chain, in my opinion, this is the absolute best option. If you run a small shop and want an easy way to add engraving service but aren't in the laser cutting business and don't want to spend time on that, it's perfect and I think it will quickly pay for itself. For schools, it's safe, it's clean, it has an interlock on the leak kids can just come in and start using it within minutes maker space it depends it's a wonderful option for the same reason as it's great for schools anyone can just come in and use it within almost no training but mastering complex tool chains is one of the reasons some people go to maker space so there's that to think about you can get a more powerful chinese lasers like my jinko for the money but that power won't necessarily enable you to do more unless you really need to cut very thick material, in which case a CNC router is often more suitable. The Ender Free 3D printer is the sort of product I can tell people save up some money, even if you are on a tight budget, it's worth it. This isn't that. For peak's sake, if you are on a very tight budget, don't even look at the laser box. Get a cheap K40 from eBay download Lightburn to run it and spend a couple of months learning its course and fixing its issues. This is a high-end tool that is incredibly good at getting people laser cutting quickly and giving you the same result that usually take a few weeks of training to learn how to get out of other machines. Anyway, I have to get this moved out of the wheel area and into the tool area so I can use it more easily. I'm already using it at least once a day for things around the house, so you'll be seeing more of the laser box soon. What do you think of it? What would you like to see me do with it? Leave your comments in the comment section. Please post my videos to any forums or social media platforms you think might be suitable. It really helps. All my videos are Creative Commons licensed, so you can absolutely include them in your own videos. All I need it's a good link to my channel. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Okay, that's a wrap. Let's go check out what's going on outside. What? My mow is only halfway done? Where's the henchman? <sighs> the shop with the laser on their head are coming tomorrow and my mow is halfway done? What the hell? It's so hard to find help these days.